Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth, and today we are going to be discussing on simple classification of substances, and we are going to be looking at the kinetic theory of matter. So we will start first by uh, defining what kinetic theory is, and then uh, we are also going to look at the three states of matter in regards to the kinetic theory, and then we are also going to look at a uh, one question. So previously we talked about the ways of separating mixtures. We looked at different types of mixtures and we were able to separate each of those mixtures to their components, depending on some of the properties they have. So you can go back into the previous videos and check uh, those different ways of separating mixtures um, and be able to learn them. So let us begin by defining what uh, kinetic theory is. So kinetic theory states that matter is made up of particles and these particles are in a random continuous state of motion or in a random continuous motion. So it means that these particles are always moving. They are not constantly like standing still they are always in a continuous random motion. So when you look at the model of the matter uh, in regards to the kinetic theory, this is how kinetic theory explains solids, liquids, and gases. So you can see our solids and you can see uh, the movement from solid to our liquids and then to our gases. We are going next to look at specific um, matter and in according to in accordance to kinetic theory what it says about the particles of those states so we will start with solids so in solid state our particles are usually closely packed so this is an example you can see how close the particles are they are closely packed together and because we said according to kinetic theory all matter is made up of particles that are in a always random continuous movement or motion. So even in solid state, these particles are not just standing still, they, are, they vibrate. They are vibrating, they always vibrate within their fixed position. But you notice with solid states, these particles do not move from one point to another because there are some forces, there are some attractive forces between the particles that are holding them strongly close together. They can only vibrate, they can only vibrate. Later on in Form 2, you're going to talk about these forces in detail. So when it is heated, we absorb, uh, these particles absorb kinetic energy and their movement increases and they vibrate even more vigorously. Remember they were vibrating? But now as the heat is being applied on the solid, the, their kinetic energy increases. So this causes them to vibrate vigorously. So as heating continues, what happens is the forces, these forces that we have discussed will start weakening, meaning the particles will start to move further or start changing position. So when that happens, we say that the solid has started to change into a liquid. So there's a change that is happening when these forces of attraction are being weakened and the particles can now move or they can change position. So this point at which this solid changes into liquid or when those particles move, we call it the melting point. And it is a constant temperature. It doesn't move just once. It stays a constant until all the solid particles have turned into a liquid. Later on, we are going to clarify that constant must be there in your definition. Next, we go to the liquid. So for the liquid state, the particles are not close together compared to in solid state. So this is how they look like. In solid state, they were closely fixed together, but in liquid, they can actually move from one position to the other. There are some spaces in between the particles. 
this is explains why liquid doesn't have like a definite shape uh, but it will always take the shape of the container so because these particles are always moving they cannot uh, when they when they are put in a specific container they arrange themselves depending on how the container is otherwise if they were fixed together then they cannot fit in just any other container although we know that liquid has also a, a definite volume so it occupies a certain amount of space and um, uh, and then these particles are actually having uh, some forces of attraction but they are not as strong as the forces of attraction in the solid state so when we hit uh, this liquid, what happens is that the particles gain kinetic energy. Their kinetic energy increases. And the moment the kinetic energy increases, these particles move rapidly. They move very rapidly. And remember we said the solid, the forces weaken to change to a liquid. Now the forces are even weakening more because the particles are even moving even faster more like rapidly so when when like remember th this uh when it starts doing this the, the temperature be, uh, stays constant so the energy that is gained from heating helps to overcome these forces like the forces are broken in between the particles they are completely broken so the particles now become free they break free and when they break free, they enter into a gaseous state. So the temperature, the constant temperature at which this liquid starts changing into gas is what we refer to as boiling point. And, and note the constant temperature. It needs to be constant because not all the particles and not all the forces are broken at once. The breaking of forces happens continuously until all of them are broken down. So now we are going to move to another state, which is the gaseous state, and look at how the particles look like in this state. So for the gaseous state, the particles are further apart. They are not only apart, but they are also free. They, are, they can move in all directions. So gases do not have a definite shape or volume but they occupy the whole space within a container, unlike for the liquids. So this is how the particles of gases look at. They do not have any forces between them. They are free to move about. You can see the spaces are larger in comparison to the spaces of the solid particles. And when we go to the opposite direction now, initially we were hitting the solid to liquid and then to gas, so we're not going to discuss further than that. So if we reverse the process and the gas particles are cooled or we reduce the amount of heat in the system, what happens? They lose the kinetic energy. When we were heating, it was increasing the kinetic energy. In this case, we lose the kinetic energy. So if they lose the energy, they are not able to move as fast as they would have if they had, would have had a lot of energy. So they slow down. When they start slowing down, they start coming together. Like the particles start attracting. So those forces now begin to appear. When they start attracting each other, they move close and then they finally form a liquid. And the process in which this solid or the particle of solid are forming uh, attraction with other particles of solid to form a liquid is what we call condensation. And it is constant. It stays in the same temperature until all the solid particles turn into a liquid. So we further look at after cooling, what happens after it forms a liquid? So we are going in the opposite direction. So when you continue cooling this liquid, the kinetic energy decreases even more. We said it decreases, but in this case, it goes down even more. When it decreases, now the particles are not, they even start coming even more close and they start going up or taking up fixed position. The particles now are formed very strong, attractive forces. So we say that the liquid is solidified. So this process where the liquid turns into a, a solid 
is what we refer to as breathing. Although we do have some unique particles that can move from a solid state into gaseous state directly, we usually refer to it as sublimation. Sublimation. And then uh, also some particles can move from gaseous state to solid state without passing to a liquid state. We refer to the process as deposition. So looking at the summary of the processes, when you move from solid to liquid, we call the process melting. And then liquid to gas, we call the process evaporating. Then gas to liquid, we call it condensation or condensing. And then the liquid to solid, we call it freezing. We introduced another process where the solid can, can directly change into gas and we called it sublimation. And then the opposite is true where this gas uh, can turn back into solid, we call it deposition. And we discussed on substances that behave in this manner. An example is iodine and dry ice. You can look at more substances in the previous uh, lesson. You can go and check that out in our previous lesson when we were talking about the process called sublimation. So you can see our arrows are full, full arrows, meaning the reaction uh, is reversible. If we have two arrows, it means it can reverse. So that's why we say we can move from a solid to a liquid and cool it down and go back to a solid. It can reverse. Uh, that process is reversible. Uh, next, let's look at a sample question uh, in regards to what we have discussed. So we have the diagram below shows the relationship between the physical states of matter, study eight and answer questions that follow. So we can see solid to gas process S. We said this is sublimation. And then we have gas to solid. We called this deposition. Uh, solid to liquid, we said this is melting. Uh, liquid to gas, we said this is evaporation. Gas to liquid, we said this is condensation. And finally, liquid to solid, which we called freezing. So let's look at the question. Identify process R, B, W, and U, which we have. Our R is melting. Our V is evaporation. Our W is condensation. And our U is freezing. Name one stuff substance that can undergo process represented by S and T. So S and T is sublimation. Uh, T is deposition. So we said some examples are iodine. We have dry ice. We also have ammonium chloride. We also have anhydrous, uh, anhydrous ion 3 chloride. Ion 3 chloride. And finally, benzoic acid. So we discussed on these substances uh, previously in the previous lesson. You can go there and check them out. So that brings us to the end of uh, the kinetic uh, theory of matter. We are still going to continue on with kinetic in the next lesson. So see you in the next lesson.